Hey guys, welcome back to the inner garden. Uh, my uh, workshop studio. Um, today I want to show you a little bit about how I work with organic materials in my artwork. It's no secret, I love my garden. I love my garden. <laughs> so um, I'm always trying to find ways to incorporate this uh, these amazing qualities and this the the yes the graphical qualities of nature into my artwork and uh, one of the ways I do this is by uh, taking a lot of seed heads or grasses or it could be flowers but right now it's winter so this is what I have and I think grasses are so beautiful. Uh, so many different ones when we go for walks, so I always come back with new ones. And then I work with something called uh, jelly, jelly plates, jelly printing. This is... Um, I prepared something for you, so we'll try to make a print. This is not a, an instructional video, it's just to show you a little bit about how I work with these uh, organic pieces. Uh, the jelly plates are uh, silicon plates and, and I mean it's one of my greatest toys. Uh, it's amazing how many different things uh, you can print with and it's so easy and it's always surprising because I can never sort of figure out what the end, res end result will be. So um, what I did was I put blue on this and then I put some of the grasses you can see and then I pulled all the blue paint off except for where the grasses and the other uh, seed heads were um, uh, shading out uh, the paint and then I removed of course all the grasses and all of that and now I'm going to see if I can maybe show you how I pull off this this bit of paint that's left, um, but on a lighter background so that this will stand out. Um, let's see if it works, and if not, I'll show you um, I'll show you some other prints that did work. <laughs> so bear with me. We'll make it uh, bright yellow, I think. Um, and this is just regular. Um, acrylic paint, no special paints needed, um, a bit of gold, so white, gold and yellow acrylic paint. And then you need these uh, brayers, they, you can get them cheaply in any, any sort of hobby shop. And then I just use newspaper to get the kind of color that I'd like to have. And um, and then I'm going to add it in a thin layer on top of the blue that's already dry, of course, because this I, I made this this uh, afternoon. And I let it dry after I removed the grasses. Um, and it's important, it's, this is only practice will do this, so it's important to add enough paint, but not too much because then you will only get the yellow and not the blue. So it's a sort of a, a fingerspitzgefühl that you need to get uh, from practicing. So, uh, and then you just clean off the brayer on some newspaper. And uh, let's see if we can get the blue grasses. On top, this is uh, some thick, quite thick, uh, this is actually watercolor paper because I didn't have anything else. So what you do is, you now you have to really, really work the color into the paper. So you get all the layers of paint onto the paper. So it might, it might take a while, bear with me. Maybe the result will be worth waiting for. I think to me it's, <laughs> it's all, always surprising and interesting to see 
what shapes come out. Um, you can also, uh, you can work in different ways. You can build layers of paint onto the, the jelly plate, or you can just build layers of paint uh, one by one onto the paper. Um, so they're just different ways and that you will have different results and different feels. Um, let's see, bear with me just a little bit more. And as you can see, this doesn't take up a lot of space. You don't need a lot of tools to to do this, so a kitchen table anywhere and you'll be fine. So let's see. Let's see if maybe we've worked. Maybe not enough, but you will get the you will get the idea. I think we need to work a little bit more on this. Anyway, let's just pull it off and I'll show you some other ones that might be a bit more accomplished. You can see some of the blue paint is coming off, but not all of it. I should have worked it some more, but it might just be interesting anyway and maybe just good enough for another layer of paint. As you can see, at least the shapes are visible. And there we are. Quite a lot of blue paint left on the plate. I could use that for another or I could clean it off. But you see this sort of dreamy feel that's on the print from all these, uh, the structures of the grasses and the seed heads, I think it's really beautiful and a wonderful way to see these uh, qualities, these organic qualities in a new, in a new way. Um, I, I put out some examples on, there are so many different expressions you can make with this technique, but right now I'm just really into grasses. <laughs> So it's, it's, very much, um, it's very much examples of that and how that looks and this sort of dreamy feel. So as you can see, these are mirror images of each other. So this is where I pulled off all the blue paint around the grasses. And this is where I pulled uh, the print like I just tried to do before. And uh, it has this sort of dreamy... A fairy tale feel that I really like. Same example here. These um, these uh, papers are uh, old uh, patterns, uh, cloth patterns, and I think they are they make these prints really interesting. Um, you can, as I said before, also build layers on top of the paper. So this actually is three or four layers. Um, and maybe you can see that this is one of the layers. So this print is actually one of the layers in, in that uh, other print that looks more sort of modern and not so dusty or how, what can I say? Um, and then, then what happens also is sometimes I make prints and then I draw on them. I use ink, I use Posca pens, I use all kinds of different things. Um, I block out some bits. And then um, you see this, this print actually is maybe not so good, but then when I use some of these frames, I can actually see how and when it works. So taking parts of a print is also sometimes interesting. Um, 
and, and I think the grasses are, they are really amazing. Another thing, you saw how I was using my brayer to roll off excess, any excess paint. And what happens is that you can build up lots and lots of layers of paint on the newspaper. And um, this, this also creates some really interesting textures that I can't really get in any other way. So I'm using the frames here also. Sometimes I like a, a piece of newspaper that's just actually scrap. I, I, I like the layers of paint so much that I, I start working on these instead of the prints. And, uh, and then I use the frames to see if, uh, if I think they're powerful enough um, once I've worked uh, on them for a while. So that's another, another uh, process that leads to another process to another process. And that's very much um, the way I work in, uh, in the studio. Also, sometimes I make prints that I don't think are maybe good enough or interesting enough to hold their own, but they can, they can be just backgrounds for new prints or they, I use them sometimes to draw on or I use them for backgrounds for uh, um, collages or other things like that. So it's, it's endless and it's like uh, <laughs> one thing leads to another um, all the time. And um, yes, so if you want a nice toy, please get yourself a jelly plate. I think they are amazing. They come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. And there are a lot of different brands, but actually I like the jelly plate best. I think it's the one that, uh, that gives the best prints, but that's just my opinion. So um, that's it for now. So thanks for watching and see you later.